everyone, good morning. This meeting is indeed being recorded. We are very excited that you are here joining us uh, in the College of Merchandising, Hospitality and Tourism at UNT, which let's just get that out of the way now. That is a mouthful. There's a lot to say. Uh, and so, and it doesn't roll naturally off the tongue. So you will hear us refer to it as CMHT affectionately. So we say this at every preview event, really anytime I have the chance to get in front of students and, and kind of talk about the college, I refer to CMHT as the best kept secret at UNT. And to be truthful, it's probably a terrible marketing strategy, but we believe it to be the case because uh, we believe in our programs, they're really excellent, high quality programs and high growth industries. Uh, but it's just one of those things that sometimes students don't come out of high school necessarily knowing about our programs. And so we really are uh, this kind of great niche at UNT. We're a smaller college. We're actually one of the smallest uh, colleges at UNT. And so it's a really nice way of taking this large, maybe occasionally intimidating thing like UNT and making it feel more like home, more like family. You'll have a chance to get to know uh, your, your, your peers in the program, your faculty, you'll get the chance to know us, the advising team, and we have some that are with us here today and you'll get a chance to hear from them as well. So uh, CMHG is a, uh, is a great college with a lot of really excellent, high quality programs that I think you'll find um, to be great options for you as you kind of decide what to do with your college experience. And to start, we're gonna watch a quick little video, if I can get it to play. There we go. Hey, John, I just wanted to let you know that it's actually not playing with the sound. Um, so you might need to restart and make sure that you're sharing your sound. I've been told it's not playing with sound. So we'll go ahead and move on <laughs> and that's okay. These are sometimes the, uh, the thrilling developments that happen in a virtual setting, uh, but that is available on our YouTube channel. So check it out. All right, so this is, uh, should be a familiar sight to all of you. This is the, the famous skyline of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, specifically in Dallas at this moment, uh, where we see among things Reunion Tower. Why do we have that up there? Well, uh, we like to remind students as they kind of prepare to come to UNT, prepare to study uh, in one of our programs, uh, that we're really well situated in the DFW area. So merchandising and hospitality and everything kind of wrapped up within the programs we offer uh, are high growth industries to begin with, but there's a lot of growth specifically within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this story. Uh, it's always a risky story, but I'm gonna tell it. So for merchandising, right, which is a program we'll talk more about here in a little bit, but it tends to uh, lean more towards the fashion industry, the apparel industry. Uh, we had a student transfer from Oklahoma State, a fine institution, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and she was close. Uh, she was probably in the middle of her program, and she transferred to UNT to study with us. Uh, and I remember asking her at orientation, why did you choose to transfer from OK State to UNT? And she said, it, it occurred to me that I was studying fashion in Oklahoma. And so uh, it was a good reminder in that moment and, and now to this day that uh, DFW is a great place to be to study these things. Because when we think about downtown Dallas, we think about all the opportunities kind of represented by our majors within the college, uh, both from large event spaces, uh, hotel companies that have their uh, corporate headquarters in the Dallas area, same with large retailers. So this is a great place to study uh, the things that we offer within CMHD. We do offer six majors, right? So we'll go through each of them in more detail, but this is just to hit the highlights real quick. We offer bachelor's of science degrees in these six things. Hospitality management, merchandising, home furnishings merchandising, which is an interesting little kind of offshoot 
uh, digital retailing, retail, and our newest program, consumer experience management. So let's start with hospitality management. Now, I will say right off the bat that it is a nationally ranked program. Uh, the, if you do kind of top hospitality programs, you do that search, uh, you, we're gonna appear on multiple lists. So is that important? Uh, we think it is, not that necessarily we appear on the list, but it's a reflection of the quality of our programs, the quality of the curriculum and instruction, and just kind of a, a taste of what to expect from the classes that you're gonna take. We do uh, have a student operated restaurant uh, the club at Gateway where students will get hands-on experience in both front of the house, uh, restaurant operations, and back of the house. So one thing I always want to say kind of right off the bat here is that the hospitality management program is not in and of itself a culinary program, uh, but you will get exposure to all the various uh, business skills related to the hospitality industry. And so we want you to know um, what it looks like to run a uh, food service, a food operation, either in restaurants or, or a hotel uh, or uh, with special events. Uh, and so even though you may not be as interested in food and beverage, maybe you're more interested in, in restaurant operations or um, maybe uh, event planning or whatever the case may be, you're going to get exposure to all those things. And we think that that's critically important to set you up for success in your career. Um, now, one thing that, that uh, we will talk about is all of our programs do require an internship and the hospitality management program is special in that it requires 500 documented work hours in the hospitality industry before you do that, in, that internship. And that's important so that way you get kind of experience and exposure um, so that way you're well prepared for that internship. And that's 500 hours post high school graduation. So if you've been working uh, at a restaurant or for a country club or at a hotel, those are hours that we could use towards that, uh, those 500 work hour requirement. So it's always important for us to begin with the end in mind. And so it's not just about the degree that you get, that you get to put in a nice frame and put on your wall uh, for everyone to see, but where can it get you? Uh, what positions could you look forward to after graduation? And this is not an exhaustive list, but we, we like to put these up there so that you have a chance to kind of dream big and think you know, what's at the end of all this? Uh, what is on the horizon of my future? And so the word I want you to really lock on to there is manager, right? And so uh, what we hope for our students and what we see frequently is that after you graduate, you're gonna be moving into a manager or equivalent type position. This isn't starting uh, at the very bottom of the barrel. This is moving into uh, management, uh, maybe that's restaurant operations management, hotel operations, et cetera. So uh, we, we hope that for our students and, and the program is meant to set you up to move into that manager level type position. And from there, we move into merchandising, our, our largest major. Uh, I, I say this often, if you polled a uh, hundred of our students, I'm gonna say 95 of them would refer to this as fashion merchandising. Um, and yes, that's what the program used to be called. We removed fashion from the title several years ago, so that way students who get this degree could be more broadly marketable um, because our students do go on to work in areas outside of the fashion or apparel industries. Uh, it's also a really well-ranked, uh, um, well-respected merchandising program. We appear on many lists as well, just like with hospitality management. Uh, and with um, the merchandising program, you get all kind of the various aspects related to um, the, the, the fashion and apparel industries and, and merchandising strategies in general. So from the planning, the development, sourcing, distribution, buying and selling, et cetera. So you're going to get a lot of... Uh, kind of different skills that you accumulate throughout the program. Fun fact, they actually asked me to uh, pose for this picture, but I was unavailable that day. I can't hear you laughing, but I'm gonna assume at least one did, maybe quietly under your breath. Again, beginning with the end in mind, thinking about careers that you might be able to pursue with a bachelor's of science degree in merchandising. The number one thing we hear from our students is buyer. That's the person who's responsible for um, selecting and acquiring the product that's going to be sold in stores. And so with that, a lot of creative decisions get made, um, but it's also something that requires a fair amount of uh, logistics and math. Um, and so that's definitely something we see students go into. Uh, also visual merchandising, which is kind of how product is displayed in stores, store layouts, window displays, kind of the visual representation of what you're trying to sell. Uh, students go on to be stylists or work in product development. Really the sky's the limit uh, within this industry. Home furnishings merchandising. Now this is a very unique one because it doesn't exist anywhere else. 
um, or if it does on a much more limited basis. So home furnishings merchandising is similar concepts to the merchandising program, which deals mostly, like I said, with, with fashion and the apparel industry. Uh, but this is dealing with home goods and home decor. And we really like to think of it as this really unique blend of interior design, interior decorating, uh, and merchandising. And so you're really getting the best of all possible worlds. If you're interested in designing uh, spaces for the home or designing products that go into the home, but you don't want to go to the links of getting an art degree uh, and everything that's involved in that. Uh, and you really want that the, the business foundation as well. This is a great program for you. It's a really small program, which is nice as well. Uh, you'll end up having primarily what, the same instructor for, for a lot of your major specific classes. And so you get to know her really well, Dr. Brandon, she's great. If we were together in person, this is where I'd introduce her and she would talk for a long time with the energy of a thousand cheerleaders. She's fantastic. Uh, this is a great program. They're doing a lot of innovative things with, uh, with augmented reality, with virtual reality, with 3D printing. Uh, they're really kind of on the, uh, the trend uh, kind of wave of some of the things that are happening uh, in the home furnishings and home goods industries. And again, the positions are very similar to what we looked at with merchandising. For example, you see uh, buyer, you'll see product development. But then we also look at things that are more specific to the home space, so kitchen and bath, um, kind of being a specialist in products designed for the kitchen and bath, uh, et cetera. Let's talk about digital retail uh, and really key in on those, those first three words there, first and best. We pride ourselves on the fact that we've kind of been on this e-commerce train uh, since the early days, really since the turn of the century, even before uh, kind of online shopping has moved into the position of prominence that it has now, uh, where it kind of is the primary way most of us shop. Uh, so we've been on this for a long time, and so it's really the kind of the first of its kind and the best of its kind in the U.S. Uh, and it has a unique interdisciplinary focus. You'll take some, obviously, you'll take some digital retailing classes where you kind of understand what it what it looks like to operate in uh, an e-commerce business, uh, from the sourcing of products uh, to setting up of websites. You learn a little coding. So it's not the most technical program. It's not the same as getting a computer science degree. But you do learn some really important technical skills. Like I said, you do learn a little um, coding, uh, HTML, so that way you can build a website. You do learn various platforms to help in the creation of a website uh, and dif different digital merchandising strategies. You learn, learn search engine optimization. So how do you make sure your company shows up in the top of those Google search results? So uh, you will take a lot of digital retailing classes in addition to some merchandising classes, some retail classes. You also get to venture kind of outside that space and take some journalism classes uh, where you tackle things like public relations and social media. You'll take some business classes as well. So really unique program uh, that's becoming a more popular option, uh, obviously, as this kind of, again, maintains a position of prominence uh, in consumer industries uh, in this point in time. And so you'll see a lot of different things there, different terms. And this is interesting. Uh, we try to update this regularly, but these are terms that are constantly changing because as, as this side of the industry evolves, uh, so do the positions that you could uh, find yourself in after graduation. Uh, but you might go into, uh, you know, being a social media manager for a company uh, or an analyst, someone who looks at the data behind an e-commerce operation, understanding how much time people are spending on the page, how do they get there, how many clicks does it take to get from one part to another part of the website. There's a lot involved in that, a lot of different things that you could do uh, on the technical side and on the creative side as well. Let's talk about retail. So one thing you might hear often, and it's a story that we're hearing quite a bit right now for obvious reasons, but we hear about the death of the retail industry or the retail apocalypse. And if the coordinator of this program were with us today, Dr. Knight, she would tell you that that is hashtag fake news. Uh, I keep telling her to stop saying hashtag fake news, but she doesn't. Anyway, so the retail industry is not dying, it's changing, right? And so we wanna make sure students are equipped for uh, that changing nature of the industry. And so um, this is a kind of a, a program meant to equip future leaders within retail to anticipate and deal with the changing nature of the industry. So uh, there's a lot of different things that you get there. And this is a good option for students who are interested in kind of large scale corporate retail operations, but may not be specifically interested in the fashion or apparel industry. Second fun fact, I'm actually inside that bear costume. She has incredible upper body strength. 
So some positions that you could expect uh, to maybe find yourself in after graduation. Now, this is where I pause and say, parents, if you're there, or if you're watching this later, and you're like, is this a degree that sets my, my student up to be a store manager somewhere? One, I'll say, actually, retail store managers make quite a considerable amount of money. Uh, but no, it's not just for that, right? So beyond, we think larger than that, we think beyond that, uh, someone can find themselves as a district or regional manager, and then kind of beyond that into corporate retail operations. And then finally, our newest program was launched in spring of 2018. Um, it's our fastest growing program uh, by far. This is consumer experience management. And this is kind of like um, a surging uh, aspect of industry. You hear about customer experience management, consumer experience management all the time. As companies really try to create a sense of loyalty with their customers as they improve the customer experience. So that way people keep coming back. Uh, so this is a really unique program. It's very broad. If someone is looking for a broad business space a degree that allows them some flexibility uh, to maybe study some additional things on, on top of their major specific classes. This is a really great option. So it has an interdisciplinary concentration area that's really fun for us because it allows us to kind of tailor uh, your coursework to fit your career goals. So if you have a really kind of fringe idea of what you want to do uh, after graduation and there's not a major that really speaks to that, but you'll be working with consumers in some way, this is an excellent option. And one thing I'll say about this as well, when uh, our former dean of the college uh, was doing the research to launch this program, she uh, did some basic searches on job posting boards like Indeed and Glassdoor to find jobs uh, that were, that kind of spoke to this consumer experience management. And she found quite a bit, enough to be very encouraging. She has since gone back and done all that work again, and it's absolutely exploded. So this is a very uh, high growth, um, kind of uh, part of the industry. So uh, definitely a worthwhile opportunity. So I mentioned this before, we do our, require all of our students to complete uh, an internship and it usually comes uh, at the end of their program. So it's one of the last things that you do before graduating. And we think this is really important because it kind of gets your foot in the door potentially, gives you some really valuable experience as you move into your career uh, after college. Uh, and what we see often is that our students do such a great job and, and are kind of so valued by the companies that they work for that those companies offer them full-time uh, jobs coming out of the internship. So that's what I mean by a chance to get your foot in the door somewhere because who knows what might come out of that internship, not just a great reference, not just a great line item on your resume, but a, a chance at a, a full-time position um, and kind of a chance to establish your career moving forward after you leave UNT. So we've thrown together a lot of information. We don't want to overwhelm you. We know this is a lot, but we also want you to think just kind of beyond the classes you'll take, the degree you, earn, you, you will earn, and think about what kind of experience are you going to get, right? What uh, can you expect as a student within the College of Merchandising, Hospitality, and Tourism? Uh, it's not just about the classroom experience. It's also about the experience outside of the classroom. So uh, several things here we'll go over pretty quickly. We do offer faculty-led study tours. So think of this as like, a really condensed study abroad. Uh, it's, these trips usually take place in the May semester session and usually are like a week, week and a half, two weeks, somewhere along there. Uh, but we have this kind of divided up by department. So on the merchandising and digital retailing side, we offer trips to Europe. That's specifically looking at European uh, fashion history, some of the uh, fashion trends that come out of uh, those areas. Uh, and so we think about uh, you know, kind of Milan, and we think of Paris as the, the kind of capital of the fashion world. Uh, they also go to London. That's a really popular trip. Uh, New York, this is kind of looking at uh, high-end retail, and one of the most uh, exciting destinations is uh, to the Louis Vuitton headquarters. So when students come back from this trip, I always ask our merchandising students, what was your favorite part? And that's what they always say. It was being able to go to Louis Vuitton, uh, and as we will see in a moment, I'll kind of tease ahead, uh, one of our alums is in a very uh, important influential position within that company and so they get a chance to meet her as well. We also offer a digital retailing study tour that goes on uh, to the west coast of the U.S. Uh, so they start out in Washington um, where they go to uh, Amazon.com, Nordstrom.com, those are all located in Seattle. 
uh, down into Oregon where they visit the Nike headquarters and from there into California to the Silicon Valley area where they um, get to a chance to visit with people from Facebook and Google and Walmart.com, really kind of the heaviest players within um, the digital retailing space. And we do also offer a Dallas study tour pretty regularly and that's more of a it's kind of like a Friday field trip um, where you get class credit. And so you're enrolled in a class and every Friday you get to take a trip to uh, various companies within the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex to see what's in our own backyard uh, and to gain some exposure and maybe expand your professional network a little bit. On the hospitality and tourism management side, there's a Chicago study tour. Um, there's a picture there um, on the right, the second picture down where they're at Soldier Field which is where the Bears disappoint their uh, fan base uh, every week. I'm sorry, I'm a Packers fan. I just wanted this to go on record since this is being recorded. Um, but yeah, so they have a chance to go there uh, and get a lot of uh, great uh, experiences and exposure um, because there's also the re a restaurant trade show that's happening at that time. So there are a chance to, to meet a lot of people and make a lot of connections. Uh, recently, we started offering a South Korea study tour where students uh, get to go to, to South Korea and see how that country is really trying to bring people in, right? They're trying to increase their travel and tourism. And so a lot of, uh, they're trying to lure uh, companies uh, to, to create, build more hotels, build more opportunities for tourists. So uh, really cool stuff happening there as well. There's a lot of major specific student organizations, right? So you think about getting involved and that's one of the most important things you can do as a UNT student, but not just getting involved in maybe like, you know, like a social organization, maybe like a fraternity or sorority, but getting involved in an organization that relates back to your major, that's gonna give you a chance to meet students who are hoping to do the same thing after graduation that, that you are, uh, and also get some exposure to industry and maybe make some connections. Money is important, right? College is expensive. We gotta be honest about that. And so it's important that uh, we provide some additional funding opportunities. And we do that both internally and externally. So students will have the chance to apply for uh, CMHT general scholarships that are uh, kind of funded by various donors uh, that have connection to our program. And then we also uh, publicize external scholarship opportunities as well. And so you'll hear about those from time to time. Um, this is kind of a broad generic statement, but there's a lot of connection to industry. And so we bring out uh, industry partners all the time to table, uh, in, in fact, in front of our advising office. Um, so students will have a chance to kind of constantly meet people uh, in the industry and make connections to companies, um, add them to their list of contacts to their network, and then hopefully that uh, leads to something after graduation. Uh, to that point, we host career expos every fall and spring for our different majors. And so that's where companies literally pay us to come talk to you guys because they want to hire you for internships and for jobs beyond college. Uh, we do host two different lecture series, an ex executive and residence lecture series and a consumer experience symposium lecture series. We brought out a lot of interesting speakers, including that top picture there on the left. That's Phil Oakes, who, uh, who was uh, working for Amazon in the early days of Amazon when it went from being what it was in the, the, the kind of initial beginnings where it just sold books and music uh, to when it really exploded and kind of um, started becoming the primary online seller for anything you could ever imagine. So he uh, brought a lot of interesting industry experience uh, to talk about to our students. Uh, and some other things, I, I wanna mention the, um, the part that where we come in, which is we offer some very individualized advising. By being a smaller college, you're assigned to an advisor um, and you stay with them throughout the uh, duration of your time at UNT. So we assign advisors based on major and last name. And so there, it provides some consistency. So we're there from the very beginning, even before you step foot on campus at orientation. Uh, and then we're there to congratulate you at commencement when you graduate. So uh, we're very proud of our approach to academic advising. Uh, and we see that from our students. They succeed really well. And we're just, uh, we're just happy to be there to kind of guide them through the process. And I do also want to plug our faculty. I think it's what sets our program apart. We have some ex excellent faculty members. Uh, and you have a nice blend of people who have uh, industry experience, recent relevant industry experience, and, and can speak from that experience. And then you have people who have like PhDs in textile science who, who uh, see the topics from an academic standpoint. So you kind of have the best of all possible worlds represented in our faculty uh, and they're they are outstanding. So that's a lot of what you can expect. That's a, kind of a limited list because we have a limited amount of time today, but um, 
hopefully there's a lot there for you to look forward to in addition to the high quality, high caliber classes that you take uh, and kind of the knowledge, skills, and abilities you gain from the program. There's a lot of cool experiences along the way as well. So it's always important just to kind of uh, point out some of our alumni. I mentioned Louis Vuitton there on the upper right. You have Lanessa Elrod. Uh, she graduated back in 96 and she is now, we have to update her title all the time because she's constantly kind of moving up. Uh, but last we checked, she is the CEO of the America Zone. So North, Central and South America for Louis Vuitton. She's headquartered in New York. So uh, we're very proud of Lanessa. Uh, and that's Professor uh, Zarola, who teaches uh, several of the merchandising classes, leads the New York study tour. That's there, uh, her on the right, and Lanessa on the left. Uh, and some additional graduates, Gary McCreary, 91, Hospitality Management, the Vice President for Catering and Convention Operations at the Sands Venetian Palazzo Hotels in Las Vegas. Uh, Stephanie Lopez, Home Furnishings Merchandising. Uh, we need to double check this because I think she's since moved up. She started as a design consultant at Haverty's. Uh, and then we have uh, Ruthana Harry, who has a digital retailing degree. She graduated back in 2018 uh, and she works uh, doing a lot of interesting things for, for Walmart.com. And then where I'll end it before I uh, bring on some guests to answer some questions that you might have, I wanted to talk about the times that we find ourselves in, right? Um, as the terms that we continue to use of unparalleled and unprecedented times. And, and if we think about the coronavirus and where we are with COVID-19 and this global pandemic, uh, we think about uh, the industries that our majors represent and being among those that, were, that have been the most impacted. And so as you think about, okay, is it safe to get a degree in something like retail or hospitality management or merchandising? Uh, well, I wanna kind of put you at ease a little bit and just kind of show how our college has been uh, kind of on the forefront of responding to the disruption within the industry. So uh, our faculty, along with some uh, industry guest speakers, have been leading a series of uh, webinars uh, called Leading Through COVID-19, kind of addressing uh, the changes to the uh, hospitality and retail sectors and how to kind of respond to those changes. And another really cool thing that we've done, mostly while we've been uh, doing things virtually and working from home, we have um, developed a space called the UNT CoLab. It's an actual um, brick and mortar retail space and kind of special event space. It's a, a space that could be used for a lot of different things and we plan to. It's over by the downtown Den Square, just off the square uh, where we source and sell some uh, products from local vendors that have a UNT connection, uh, very mean green specific stuff, a lot of really cool product, but it's gonna be a space that's gonna be woven into your uh, work in the classroom. And so uh, faculty will have this to use for projects um, uh, for events and, and things like that. So we're really excited. And a lot of that has come together uh, while we've been more or less working from home during COVID-19. So um, have no fear. Yes, the industries are changing and, and are having to deal uh, with some outside disruption because of the pandemic. Um, but we are well situated to kind of continue to lead as a college um, in addition to what UNT is doing during, that, uh, during these times. So uh, with that, I'm gonna bring this to an end and we'll move into a period of question and answer. So I will uh, now introduce uh, two additional people from the advising office. So we have Philip Aguanaga, who is an academic counselor, and our director of advising, Kelly Spry. Um, we're all here and available to answer any questions that you might have. So feel free to share things in the chat and we'll respond as questions come through. While we're waiting on the first question or two, um, I thought it might be helpful because I believe most of our attendees are, or several of our attendees are interested in hospitality management. And so Philip, I don't know if you would want to talk a little bit more about um, the work experience requirements that we have for that program. Sure. So John mentioned that all of our degrees require an internship and uh, it's a three hour class, the internship class, but for the hospitality management classes uh, in particular, the hospitality management students, you also will need to complete 500 hours of work experience before that internship class. It's one of, one of the prerequisites uh, for getting the code to enroll in the class. 
And um, that help, that's helpful for many students because you can start to work in the hospitality industry today. Both of our industries really you can start to work in today. But to get the positions that are, that are helpful management and training programs that a lot of companies have set up uh, to be a, an early entry level manager, you might need to have some experience. So that, that helps encourage students to start to work on that. I also have, we'll have some students that will want to move from one part of the industry to another. And so requiring those work hours is, is part of it. And you'll, you'll turn a lot of that documentation in at, uh, at near the end of your program. We'll talk about it in advising multiple times. That's often a question for students. How can I make sure that I document those well? I also see Abby has a question of uh, who are some of the hospitality internship company partners. And I'll mention some of them. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list. We allow students to, to go and find an internship um, if there's not one of those companies that, that we're bringing in. But a lot of the big hoteliers that you, you, you'll hear about and understand, Omni, Marriott, Hyatt, uh, we have multiple people that, will, that are here in this area that will come in and recruit. They're not recruiting for just this area, but they, they know they're located here. They have a, a corporate office here. And then um, a few of the, the restaurants that are closely connected with us, um, it could be anything from Waffle House and um, Chick-fil-A uh, to Papa's restaurants. I love the Papa's recruiter. She's one of my favorite people ever. Um, and they, they do a really, really good job of training their managers. And then also plenty of event places. There's uh, event companies. Ultimate Ventures is an event company in, in Dallas. And, and I've had multiple students do internships through them as well as I've do, had students do internships with AT&T Stadium um, and, and the Cowboys and a lot of uh, more smaller wedding venues, event planning venues that are in the DFW area. So those are really, really quick list of some of them though. I mean, it's, I think the list is 300 uh, long that I have from the past seven years that I've had at graduation of graduating students of a number of places that students have done an internship to 300 different places. Okay, I'll let some, somebody else answer some other questions. Yeah, we have a question from Jesse. Uh, the question is, I'm interested to hear more about consumer experience with a focus on hospitality. What would that be like? Well, yeah, that's an interesting combination that we do see quite a bit uh, and have started to see as uh, more students uh, change their major to consumer experience management or come to join us initially as consumer experience management majors. And so just to explain the concentration area is a pretty small part of the overall degree plan. So by and large, you'll be taking classes that focus on understanding the consumer. So uh, understanding consumer behavior, why people make the kind of purchasing decisions that they do and how might you influence that to some degree, understanding consumer analytics, all the, the kind of data that companies gather, um, one, how to even look at the data and then what to do with it, right? How to make kind of uh, informed decisions based on it. Uh, so most everything will be involved, uh, will be kind of related to that. But from there, uh, with the concentration area, we require uh, at least 15 hours uh, for a concentration area. Uh, so that's five classes. And so you can kind of get some basic exposure to um, the hospitality industry. and so. Usually with that, and Philip and I both uh, advise for consumer experience management, we kind of like to get a sense for what the student is interested in and what you might want to do after graduation. So, for example, if it's something like uh, I want to work in special events, then we really think about that. Um, oftentimes, maybe we have a student who's interested in hospitality, but is less interested in maybe the food and beverage side. And so uh, we kind of want to avoid the food preparation, restaurant operations type classes. So really we can make of it uh, by and large, um, whatever we want based on kind of the criteria that you're looking at. Bill, do you have anything to add to that one? No, I mean, um, John and I are, especially I primarily advise hospitality students as well as consumer experience students. John advises merchandising and consumer experience. So uh, we, we do come from a little bit different perspectives on what that looks like with hospitality um, because you, you the concentration, as John mentioned, is only 15 hours. So there's some classes, of course, in, that you're not going to be getting, not going to be taking. And it's important to understand that and to compare that. But those are common conversations that we have in advising day in and day out uh, with students. And, and you know, the main thing is we, we can help you once you get here. That's often sometimes conversations that students have, John has had with merchandising versus retail, ver merchandising versus digital retailing is um, if you know you want this area, then we'll, we'll help you decide on which one and maybe take some classes that can fit into both. And, and that's helpful for many students. So that way they can then make that decision as the semesters go on. 
Awesome. Looks like we have a question from Deanna. What are some of the minors, uh, one of the options for minors? Could you pair visual merchandising as a minor with a major uh, in consumer experience uh, management? So just to say off the bat, so one thing we see students do quite a bit uh, for their concentration area is pursue a minor. And so Philip can also attest to this. Probably the most common one that we see lately uh, is a marketing minor through the College of Business. It's kind of a nice way to get that, uh, that marketing uh, side, a lot of overlap. And so you get um, some similar concepts, but from a slightly different angle, a slightly different perspective. So we see that quite a bit. Now, home furnishings merchandising, that could definitely be um, a, there is a home furnishings merchandising minor and that could definitely be your concentration area. And we do see that for students who are interested in going into uh, that side of the industry, but want to focus more on the customer, less on maybe the actual design of the product or get the best of both worlds, which is kind of one way to do that. Now, as far as visual merchandising go, we don't offer a minor in that. Um, but uh, you could definitely take, you will take a class in visual merchandising as part of the consumer experience management program. Let's see here. All right. Ahead, uh, yeah, I'll take uh, Tiffany's question. She asked a question about the Disney College program, and uh, that is a, a, a common thing. Um, um, before all the coronavirus stuff started, I probably had a student, and even d during it, I had multiple students that were in Disney in the spring. Um, but I have at least one student every semester, and I just see half of the hospitality students that are that are doing the Disney College program. Uh, so that is a common interest for many students. It's important to understand what the Disney College program is, and then also what the requirements of our internship is. Disney College program is getting students an introductory part to the Disney company, and, and you can choose some um, specific areas to participate in, to work in. Hospitality has a few different uh, options within those areas. You could work in the hotel, you could work in, the, in some of the food service part, um, you could work in events and, and, and some of those areas. So we will allow the hospitality part of the Disney College program to be used as those pre-internship work experiences. But for the, the um, senior level internship class, it does need to be something a little bit further beyond entry level. Often those positions in the college program are more entry level. And so what we want to see usually from students that are wanting to go to Disney there's a professional internship uh, program that Disney has had where you have to be in your last semester or recently graduated. So we'll use that um, or just a, another uh, full time position at Disney if students end up uh, wanting to go back to Disney. And, and I've had students do it multiple ways. Some have ended up at Disney. Some have said, OK, I'll still I'll, I'll do the Disney College program, come back here, do my internship at like the Gaylord Texan or Great Wolf Lodge, which is very much like a resort. It, it feels like you've got a lot of different areas you can work in because um, they're still taking classes here while doing that internship. And then as they finish their degree, they're looking to apply and move, move back to Disney. Um, so we've seen multiple students do, do stuff with Disney. Obviously, Disney is a very competitive company, very interested from a lot of people in a lot of industries to work for. Um, so that, that's certainly a, a common thing that we've seen and um, that I always love to talk to students about. Last call for questions, I think. So feel free, if you have anything, put it there in that Q&A and we'll tackle it live here with you. Philip, do you wanna talk about kind of what we're gonna to do to follow up this session uh, in case anyone is interested uh, and has additional questions? Absolutely. Um, we were wondering if, if the session had gone close to time, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, then we would have we could have a Zoom meeting afterwards because this this webinar is going to close down in about ten minutes, uh, and if anybody is interested in that, I can put the Zoom link in. Um, but if you feel like you've been able to to get a lot of your questions answered, then that's great. I'm about to post in the chat a um, survey link for the um, just as a follow up, and we I would encourage everybody who's attending each prospective student to please fill out that survey. It's really quick. It's just like five questions. It's you know getting some of your basic information. So that way, as a college, we can, can send you some follow-up emails and, and contact information um, here pretty soon. Also, at the very end of the survey will be our contact information for all the advisors in the college. That way, if you want to make an appointment or have any um, follow-up emails or something, we're more than happy to talk to students and to see prospective students um, at any type of format that you might need. If you'd prefer a phone or a virtual 
um, appointment, we can absolutely make that happen. In-person appointments, we, we definitely can have. Uh, they'll be limited. We're trying to make sure, of course, that we keep everything safe on campus. So um, we'll, we'll have um, a space ready for in-person appointments if somebody does want to come in and, and, and come onto campus. And um, so the, that instructions is at the end of the survey, as well as our emails and contact information. Yeah, and you can always, uh, just to preview that, you can always email us uh, at cmhdadvising at unt.edu. If you have any basic questions uh, related to our majors or different classes or, or whatnot, maybe some transfer coursework, uh, if you email that one, it will get routed to your, who would be your assigned advisor. So that's always one way to get in contact with us. We do have a question from Jesse uh, that I'll field, uh, that I will hand over to Philip to field, but can you explain, is the 500 hours a part-time job and I'll preview the answer by saying yes, and maybe, and no, it depends. <laughs> yeah, so it could be, it, it's anything in hospitality. Remember, this is just for hospitality management students. Uh, those 500 hours that you will need to complete before the, the um, internship class is uh, 500 hours in any level of hospitality. It can be a part-time job, it can be a, a full-time position. I've had students uh, who have wanted to still take classes only during the fall and spring semesters, the, long, the regular part of the, the school year, and then they'll just work full time or close to full time in the summer um, with events, go in and hire some, I look at places hiring seasonally, and uh, you can get 500 hours there fairly easy. Um, we do start to count those hours after high school. So if you're um, going to be a transfer student or if you are a transfer student and you've already been working in the hospitality industry, um, then those hours will, will be able to start counting uh, as well. It doesn't just have to be while you're here at UNT um, that you complete 500 hours. So hopefully that answers that question. I, like I mentioned before, we, we, that's a common conversation for us pretty much every semester for students is, okay, how are you doing your 500 hours? Um, what are you doing them in right now? What do you want to do uh, for your internship? And how, let's make sure we think strategically about how you're going to work to get to where you want to go. Awesome. Any more questions? We're happy to, we've got about five more minutes before we comfortably wrap up and hand things back over to the admissions team. And yes, we are lingering in awkward silence, but that's sometimes how these things go. How do you, okay. More questions about the 500 hours, John. How do you, Julie asks, how do you prove those 500 hours? Well, uh, anything from pay stubs, pay stubs can be a lot of, you know, if you're only working 10, 15 hours a week um, to try and get to 500 hours. So usually what I'll suggest that students do is if you're finishing employment with someone, uh, say you're currently elsewhere away from Denton and you're going to leave your job, hopefully, you know, leave it in a, in a good spot uh, before you come to Denton to, to start your studies in hospitality management then just ask manager, HR manager, somebody like that for a record, a, a letter of um, how many hours, approximately how many hours you completed, maybe a sentence or two about your job description, what you were doing there. So that way we could show it's hospitality related. Uh, and you just keep that documentation with you. You'll turn it in with the, uh, the internship application. And then Deanna asks, how, can volunteer hours count for the hours for the internship? And um, I think that does depend on the degree a little bit um, that, that, the, oh, that you're wanting to do the internship for. Um, for hospitality, we do prefer, almost require pretty much that it be a paid position um, because there's a lot of things that go on behind that when a company is, is paying for your, your um, for your work. That well, we also want students to be valued for their work. That's a, that's a big part of it. Um, uh, there are, I think, a few unpaid internships that will allow primarily on the merchandising side, right, John? Yeah, definitely. And, and whereas on the hospitality side, it's basically required that the internship itself be paid. Um, for the other programs, they don't necessarily have to be paid, but what we tend to say uh, and tell students is that um, the kind of caliber of work that you're doing you, and the kind of expertise that you bring with you, um, these are not, when we think about internships, we're not thinking about fetch the boss some coffee and bagels kind of internships. We're talking about high level uh, experience. And so we want you to get paid for that. But yes, there are, uh, for example, uh, at the um, Dallas Market Hall, you might uh, work in a showroom and often those are unpaid, for example. But um, we do also prefer that the internships be paid because you should be uh, compensated for the work that you do and the experience that you bring to the table. 
All right, last call. Going once, maybe, going twice, and back to Sheree. <laughs> and thank y'all. That was an amazing session. I hope our attendees learned some good information and they'll be joining TMHT as soon as this session is over. <laughs> uh, but I want to thank our guests and I want to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. This session will be uh, posted uh, within the next week if you wanted to go back for any reference. So I want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, and y'all have a great rest of preview. Oh, join our student panel. It starts at 12 p.m. if you want to know more about student life at UNT. But thank y'all for coming. Bye, y'all. <laughs>